Well, if this car looks familiar to you, you've been watching my channel a while at least. Back in the day I did water pump on it, I've done thrust arms on it, I've done rear brakes, and today it's in for an oil filter housing gasket, which is a very common N52, uh, N54, N51, 55 whatever. All N series inline sixes have this issue. It just it's a little piece of rubber, it just degrades over time. So it's in for that, and it's also in for the front brakes now, which I uh, inspected last fall when I did the rears, and uh, it was in need of it. So I get to add to my little scrap pile there. Um, we got lots of parts queued up for future projects here. I'm trying to group them by project. Um, I've got the brakes and the coolant, and there should be a gasket. Yes, this is the oil filter housing gasket for the car. Uh, I got the E60 coming in next, a couple parts missing. Mm, actually, I've got an, an M54 swap I'm doing immediately next. I'm not sure how much I'll cover with that in video just because it's a tight timetable. And then I've got Mr. Wags here. So I got the six piston brakes. And then I've also got uh, the tensioner, which fails pretty often. I have oil filter housing gasket, which is sort of letting go. A new belt. A lot to do. Um, but anyway, I'm going to lower the lift down. I was cleaning a little bit after Brexit left just to try to make this uh, borrowed workspace a little bit less raunchy looking. So I'm going to get this thing up on the lift, get the hood open, and uh, I'm going to vent the pressure out of the cooling system and then drain the block, which is required because not only does coolant flow through the oil filter housing, oil flows right next to it and I'm trying to avoid as much cross-contamination as I can because so I would like to not have to do a full oil change on this car uh, if I can avoid it. Well today I learned that these don't have block drains. I could have drained everything out through the water pump but I decided just to pop the upper clamp off, go slow, and drain just enough out um, to get that going. Once that coolant is drained out and I've soaked up the residual oil that's in this oil filter housing. I should be okay to take out this bolt right here. There's one just like it. I'll show it to you when I get to it on there. And then there's one on the front side right here. And the gasket's just in there. This is really not a difficult DIY. Um, and it's actually in a much better spot than the earlier M54s to do it. But... Uh, Still, it's kind of an unknown for me. This is a project I'm gonna have to do a few times moving forward here, so I'm glad I get to do it for money the first time, I guess. <laughs> but right now, just letting the coolant drain out and soaking up the residual engine oil. Well, there's residual draining off the belt, but there's our front e-torx. And we got a little buddy right down in there which I'm going to suggest we don't try to get at there with a wrench, but rather get at it through here. Uh, that's not the right bolt. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sneak an extension and a uh, U-joint uh, up there, and they should be able to zip that one out. It's a Torx E10. For that back bolt, I actually really couldn't get at anything without taking the alternator off, but I was able to squeeze this wrench down in here, get it completely underneath, and then I was able to do just enough with my fingertips through the runners to back that out entirely. Um, that's definitely the hard bolt. The two top ones, very easy. This front one looks like it's going to be really easy. I'm actually going to use an 8mm to uh, get rid of this here. Oops, that's the wrong way. So I'm going to take that out, and then slowly and carefully take this filter housing off, and then hopefully no cross-contamination happens. I really do have my fingers crossed on that one. If it does, worst case, I just have to add some new fluids, but seeing as I didn't bail out for them, I would like to not have to do it. Shoot, not bad, bud. Lost a little bit, but think caught pretty clean. <laughs> Got lucky, so looks good. Uh, I'm going to clean that down thoroughly, get rid of all this little goober here where the old gasket was. And then on the housing itself, I'm going to take out the old gasket, 
put the new gasket in and then I'm going to put a thin layer of RTV around everything oil. I'm not going to bother with everything coolant, um, but I do want to make sure that the oil stays separate from the coolant and then also to make sure that it doesn't leak um, out of the engine onto the side, stuff like that. So there we have some extra Hylomar where the oil and water passages go and then also where the bottom of the gravity will bring the oil. So now I'm going to very carefully get this aligned and set back off so it doesn't uh, destroy the alignment for the Hylomar. And then I'm going to tighten our bolts back on. And there we have it. You can see just a little bit of Hylomar peeking out. We're looking pretty good. Everything looks like it flattened out nicely. I'm pretty pleased with that. I was actually expecting this job to be a little bit harder than it was. Um, a lot of shops will pull the intake manifold to do this. And I'm not exactly sure why they would do that. It's got to be this rear bolt. But honestly, I have a crappy one of these, a speed wrench, 8 mil. If you had a good one of these with a really fine tooth mechanism, you could do it from the top here. Because I can get this wrench onto that nut from right here. And I just dropped it, but I got a magnet, so it's fine. Um, but anyway, this part's done. What I'm going to do now, open up the bleed screw, fill it up till I see a dribble out of there, cap it, and then I'm going to do the uh, bleed procedure like you do when you change the water pump, just to make sure it's all bled through and I don't have any leaks. After that, I'm going to check the oil level. Um, I lost a little bit just sucking it out of the uh, reservoir, so I got to add just a tiny bit of oil. Um, and then I got to put the lower plate back on the car, and then it's time for front brakes. So that really wasn't too bad. Uh, if you did it by the book, it would probably be pretty terrible. But uh, I think all in, I'm only at 35 minutes maybe from the time I lifted it up to now. So pretty quick. That uh, I would gladly do those in the future. So yep, coolant, bleed, oil, bottom tray, brakes. Now on to the turkey gravy. We've got oh, two and a half millimeters, a deeply ridged rotor. These aren't unsafe, but they are not in good condition by any stretch of the word. Wow, yeah, not much left on there. So here I'm gonna pop off the caps on the caliper sliders. Seven mil Allen's on there. I'm gonna compress the piston pull the sliding portion of the caliper off. Then I'm guessing these are 19s. Pop those off, take the bracket off. This uh, circlip comes off first, actually. Let's do this first. And then we're gonna have a five. I think that's a five millimeter, it might be a six. Depends car to car. Retaining bolt, we'll take the old rotor off and get the new stuff ready to go on. Well, that all came off really easily. I'm gonna hit the hub flange all the way around with my wire brush. I'm going to pull out the slider pins on the caliper, drop them, and then I'm going to clean those up with a wire brush and then apply some grease, just some molybdenum grease, slide them back in, and then uh, the new rotors, when you get them out of the bag, I've covered this before in other videos, but they have the uh, oil film on them, so you're going to want to take some soapy water or some brake cleaner, spray the friction surfaces and then wipe it off with a towel. And then you'll be ready to put them on. So I guess I'll grab a pair of pads and a rotor, bring them over. Oh, there she is, one corner done. Um, I do kind of gloss over it on this one. I've done a lot of brake jobs on video. Uh, there's a really well-produced one that I did on the Fiat a few months ago. Uh, if you are doing this as a DIY on your 3 Series, just go back and watch that. It's the same. Uh, same process, and I go over the lubrication points and what to do. Um, it's all pretty much the same on disc brake cars, so I'm going to go ahead and hop over the other side, get that done, get these wheels back on, torqued, and this car is good to go for at least however long until something else gets diagnosed as needing work. <laughs> and just like that, hey presto, she's done. <laughs>